adventurers, so today is going to be another book review. This is for The Man in the Iron Mask by Alexander Dumas. As I mentioned in my Monday video, my Monday's, Monday's video, which was a review of Maduke, I don't normally have reviews on Thursdays, but I needed to get this one out because it ended up being late, and I, but I still wanted to get it out. Anyways, so this is my review, as always, with, the, with this D'Artagnan romances series. They're historical fiction because Alexander Dumas lived after the time that he's writing about. Um, so they're historical fiction, but they're swashbuckling adventures, um, they're comedy, or com comedic at least, maybe not specifically comedies, but they're very comedic. This one is very heavily a tragedy, much like the, much like the first book was, and uh, as always it's a romance. And this one is much more in line with the, the Three Musketeers, and it's understandable why people kind of cut out 20 years later, or 20 years after, and then, um, by Count de Bragelon and Louis de la Valliere and kind of just say that those two don't exist or those three don't exist because these two books that book in the series really are the primary storyline and they're the beginning of the character stories and the end of the character stories and I'll get more into that in a second. Before I continue though, I'd just like to briefly say if you like what you're seeing from a narrative adventure we'd really appreciate it if you would like and comment and subscribe if you haven't already. Alright, let's get back into this review. So we have now reached the end of the D'Artagnan romances, and it's been a journey, a great one, but it's very much been a journey. Uh, the Man in the Iron Mask is a return to the form after the kind of step away with Louise de la Valliere, which was much more of a romance than it was a, a action adventure, swashbuckling, whatever you want to call it, adjectives uh, series. And it's, with Louise de la Valliere straying a little bit away from it, away from that story it's at the same time so the this last book which is called ten years later I believe is made up of the Vicomte de Bracelon, Louise de la Valliere and then the man of the iron mask and so Louise de la Valliere which is this middle section is used as a way to set up for and prepare for this massive ending that's going that's about to happen with the man of the iron mask and so while it does stray away from the fun adventureness of this of the rest of the books in the series for quite a bit and it focuses more on the romance and the politics it's still very important to the story but this final book this the man in the iron mask it returns to the form of Dark, uh, the three musketeers and 20 years later and Vicomte de Bragelonne and so it, it wraps it up really nicely we are again following our four heroes and seeing them once again is just absolutely amazing you these four characters D'Artagnan, Athos, Porthos, and Aramis they're just the best characters like they're so fun but this book is full of tragedy it is the end of the story of this D'Artagnan romances but it's also the end of these characters that we've grown to know and love, it's the end of their stories as well. And though they might not end exactly as we hope some of the time, each ending feels right and natural for the characters and where they've come from and their journey to this point. Um, it's sad that we're leaving these characters and we don't get to continue on with the series and with these characters anymore, but it's also satisfying the way that the story ends for each of them. Some of the absolutely most comedic scenes in this series, the most comedic moments in this series happen in this book, and the, the series as a whole has some great comedy and humor mixed in, and you just bust out laughing, but some of them, some of the most funny scenes happen in this book, and you're just, uh, Porthos especially, you just, the way that he interacts with the other characters it's just so fun and so funny and you just I just love seeing all that from these characters. Throughout it all the characters are at the best they've ever been in terms of character. Um, obviously they're significantly older than they were in the in their 30 40 years older what is it uh, 20 plus yeah so they're they're like 35 years older than they were in in dark in the three musketeers and you feel their age but their characters are still so strong. Once again, the politics that are woven into this story are done absolutely masterfully. The romance is toned down a good bit as well, which really helps me personally just enjoy this final entry so much more. Um, not that I have an issue with romance, it's just with how heavy it was in Louise de la Valliere, I was ready for it 
to take a break from that, to take a step back from that and just have a, have a fun adventure story one last time. Overall, this series has been fantastic, and this last book really helps to seal the deal on it being a favorite series of mine of all time for me. Um, I will admit there are some characters that I expected to play a much bigger role in the story than they did, but it ended up being more of them leaving an impact and uh, that their influence is felt throughout the rest of the story and even drives the story forward more so than their physical presence being necessary, if that makes sense. And it, it probably makes a lot more sense if you've read the book than if you haven't. I'm very, very happy with the series. And as I mentioned, the series has solidified itself as an absolute favorite of mine. But also this series has solidified Dumas as a favorite author of mine as well. I loved The Count of Monte Cristo. And I figured from that, yeah, I'll probably, he'll probably be a favorite author of mine. But I gave him this other series so that I could say, yeah, I've read more than just this one book by him. Um, to prove to myself that yes, I love Alexandre Dumas as an author and it, it worked this while I did have While I did enjoy Louise de la Valliere less than the rest of the series the series as a whole just solidifies him as he's a phenomenal author and storyteller I don't know exactly what I'll read next by him, but I fully intend to read more and in fact I have a small book that is a, a co compilation of stories by Alexander Dumas, it's titled The Works of Alexander Dumas. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing what else is in here. I also know that there are a couple other stories set in the same storyline or story world, I guess, as Three Musketeers and Dr. Ian Romances. There's a story about, I can't remember what it's called, the red something or other, but it's, <laughs> the, but it's, it follows the character of uh, Cardinal Richelieu. And so I'm, ex I'm excited to go back and read that at some point. It takes place between um, Three Musketeers and 20 years later, 20 years after, 20 years later, I think. Anyways, um, it does take, there is another story set in this world. I think there actually might be another one even than that, but I can't remember what it's called. And it's, anyways, I, so there are, is much more for me to read from Dumas and I'm excited to read more, but it, for now, this is the end of my uh, journey through the D'Artagnan romances, and it's, it's been a great journey. Uh, very, very happy with how this series played out. Um, I will say this, a lot of people, again, they tend to ignore the fact that 20 years after, 20 years after, 20 years later, I think it's 20 years later, and then Vicon de Bragelon and Louise de la Valier, a lot of people, choose to ignore those books and say that they don't really exist and so they just read Three Musketeers and Man in the Iron Mask and because of that I've heard some or seen read some reviews complaining about how this book just didn't feel the same it, it feels off it the characters aren't the same and I'm like well yeah if you skip a major portion of the storyline then you're gonna not understand where the characters are coming from in this final book and so I would say Although these probably Three Musketeers and Man in the Iron Mask are probably the best of the series, I would say that those other books are very important to the series as a whole, and you definitely should read them if you if you're enjoying them. They're all immensely enjoyable. You just so they do take a bit to get through because they're big books. So, anyways, that is my review for The Man in the Iron Mask. Thank you guys for watching an Air Dead Adventure. We post videos every Monday and Thursday and have our social medias linked in the description down below. We will see you guys again soon. Stay warm. Well.